in general, we do decimal operations just with the calculator. A lot of times the decimal parts have so large of numbers in them that it's just, it's just a lot easier to use a calculator for that. Um, I want to show you addition and subtraction really quick because I think the, the algorithm for doing that by hand is useful in our understanding, but I do not expect you to do that. I would just use a calculator for these if it were me doing that. I'm going to do this vertically like I've shown before with addition. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the decimal points. So we have um, one, one, three point five, seven, nine, three, nine, four. And what I've done is I've lined up every single place value here because I've lined up the decimal points. This is going to be the ones then the hundreds, thousands, and I can add zeros in those places that I'm missing from either one of the numbers. In this case, the, the top number needs those zeros. And then I just add going straight down. I'll always start in the leftmost or the, uh, the rightmost spot and go leftward. 0 plus 4 is 4, 0 plus 9 is 9, 0 plus 3 is 3. 7 and 9 make uh, 16. So of course I want to drop down the, that one spot for that number and then add up the tens that was there because this is 10 times more than this one. So really the one should go into this column. 1, 8, and 7 is going to be 16 again. Bring the 6 down. The 1 deserves to be in this column, so this is 10 times as much as this, this column's place value. 1, 1, and 5 makes 7. The decimal point gets, just gets dropped straight down. And then, of course, we're going to get 3, 1, and 1. And so that's that's how you can do this by hand. We're just really adding up the place, the, the place value columns. And we're doing the same exact algorithm. If you have to carry, carry it into the next highest place value. Okay, subtraction works very similarly. Uh, 27.35841. And I'm going to line up the decimal points. And now I can subtract. So I'm going to add a zero in for the missing place value. I, I don't need to add a zero here. Uh, but you could, you could add a zero and just go like down like that. Okay, one minus zero is one. Four minus six can't do that. So we're gonna take uh, 10 from the um, highest, next highest place value and add that to this one. So this becomes 14 now. 14 minus six is eight. Then we get three, four, zero. Decimal point drops down. And of course, we need to carry it again here. Uh, or, or, or borrow uh, 10 from this, uh, the tens place and add it to the ones place. 17 minus eight is gonna be nine. One minus zero is, is just one. So that's, so addition and subtraction work very similar to uh, doing it by hand in the whole numbers. Of course, don't do it by hand, just do it on a calculator. Much nicer to do. So order of operations still works the same way. You're still gonna use PEMDAS or GEMA as I've shown before. Um, but the nice thing about calculators is that as long as the uh, calculator is a scientific one, then you actually don't need to um, do anything here. You can just type the whole thing, the whole expression into the calculator and then solve it. Typically, you're going to have to round, so keep that in mind. So for this one, right, the first step we need to do is multiply these two values together. Then we can um, add going uh, going left to right, right? We're going to add this and then whatever we get from here and then take whatever we get from that and then subtract 0 0.03. So I'm going to show that in the calculator. I'm going to show both ways. I'm going to just type the whole thing in and then do it step by step to show you that you're going to get the exact same answer. All right, and here we go. We have the, the full expression typed into a calculator. It gives us 98.173. Now instead, let's take this step by step and do order of operations. The first thing that we've done here is multiplication. So I would do 4.35 times 21.72. Okay, and then I'm going to take that. I'm going to add 3.721 to that number I just got, 3.721. Add it to, I'm just going to use the answer um, functionality, which takes the previous answer, plugs it in. And so we get 98.203. And then I need to, so that, that was this, that was this portion of, of the expression done. 
Now I need to subtract off the 0 0.03 from that. So I'm going to take the answer, which was 98.203, minus 0 0.03. And you can see here, I get 98.173, 98.173. So you can do it in parts if you want, each part individually, um, and get an answer, or you can just type the entire thing in, and then it will calculate that for you. As long as it's a scientific calculator, it will do this because it has order of operations already in it. Okay, we got 98.173. Of course, it said round to the nearest whole number, which would be the 8. So this is our test digit. That's not 5 or greater. So we're going to just drop this whole thing. And 98 is our answer for this case. Now for this one, I, I want to look at this one um, on its own. Um, we, you can just, of course, plug that into a calculator and solve it, but this one's a little bit interesting. So 0 0.1 squared is going to be 0 0.1 times 0 0.1. Now, the way we get 0 0.1, because we're moving one digit, we can move it back and we can create um, 1 over 10, right? This is the fraction form of this of this um, decimal number. Well, this is the same thing as 1 tenth times 1 tenth, which is going to be 1 over 100. 1 over 100, if you plug it into a calculator, we can use the exact same algorithm here to go backwards because you can see that we had just one in the numerator. We did one space over. If you're going to divide by 100 or divide by 1,000 or divide by 10,000, it doesn't matter what you're doing. All you're doing here is whenever you divide by a power of 10, you're just taking a decimal point, which is always going to be right there on the right, and moving it, the amount of zeros in the bottom. So we're going to move it one, two places. It's going to be 0 0.01. So when, whenever you're dividing by 10, you don't need a calculator for that. Because all it's doing, since our number system is base 10, is just moving the decimal point. The same thing is true when you multiply by 10. You're just moving the decimal point um, to the left to the right, depending on what multiplication or division by 10. Um, so that's, that's the answer for this one. It's going to be 0 0.01. Okay. Let's plug this one in the calculator and get uh, two places for the rounded answer. All right, and here we go. We have the expression plugged in. We get 7.256329. It wanted to round it to two places, so it's going to be 7.26 is going to be our answer. Now, of course, if you're going to follow this using order of operations, you're going to first do this thing in parentheses. Then you're going to um, do the whole thing squared, because that would be the next um, part of PEMDAS or GEMA. Then we're going to take whatever we get from that, add it to 4.0, and finally take all that stuff and subtract 2.14 from that. Rounding to two places gives us 7.26. Okay, let's look at the next one. We have our answer is 5.8729290680. Okay, and it says round to the nearest hundredth. That's, of course, the same thing as two places past the decimal. That's our testing digit. It's not five or greater, so we're not going to round up. We can just drop the rest of it. We're going to get 5.87 is our solution. If we're going to use uh, order of operations on this, right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do this and get that cube. Then we're going to do the division, and then after that is done, we're going to do that multiplied by 7.813. And finally, we can subtract those two um, separated portions, this whole thing minus this, what, what, whatever we got from the um, cubing of that. Subtract those together, and that's what gives us this 5.87 when, when we round. Okay, the smallest denomination of U.S. money is the penny. And this is always in placed in the hundredths place, two places past the decimal. So every every U.S. dollar uh, or you know dollar amount quantity that that's being shown, um, if it's not rounded to the um, you know whole whole place the the whole dollar, then it should only be two places past the decimal. Now uh, we're going to write these numbers uh, as a decimal number. We have twelve dollars. And this is where the decimal point goes, 75 cents. The cents, of course, is the decimal portion of a dollar. So $12 um, 
and 75 cents. That's how you read that. This is a dollar amount, so I'm going to add the dollar symbol in front of it. 32 cents, well, it has no whole part, so I'm going to write it as 0 0.32 with a dollar amount. However, you can also write this with the cents, um, cents symbol, 32 cents, same thing. Um, typically, the, the, this would be used 0 0.32 uh, dollars. Okay, 5 cents, this is, of course, going to be 0 0.05. 5 cents means there's going to be 5 pennies, and pennies is the hundredths place, so it needs to be in the furthest place value. You could also use, of course, 5 cents. $100.07, 100 dollars I mean, you're going to have one, two zeros, and 7 cents. Finally, $20.30, $20.30. Cents. Let's round these dollar amounts to the specified monetary place value, which of course has is the same thing as a place value, but it's used in context. So the dime is the same thing as the tenths uh, place. That's going to be where the five is. Six is our testing digit that is five or greater, so we're going to round that up. So we're going to get one twenty-seven. Point sixty, and I am going to write the full six zero there. I'm not going to write just one twenty seven point six because this is a dollar amount. We're always going to have two places past the decimal if we're going to show the cents in there. Okay, to to the nearest dollar, that's going to be the same thing as the whole place, the the ones place. The testing digit is five. That is five or greater. So we're going to add the, add one. And so this one, you could write it as 127 because it's the whole dollar. But if you wanted to, you could also write it as 127.00. Because there are no cents in this, the just the 127 works just fine. The previous one, we couldn't do that because we had 60 cents. So that, that needed to be there. And you need to have both place values to show that. Uh, to the nearest $10 is going to be right here. Our testing digit is 7 then, that is 5 or greater, so we're going to add 1, and we get 130, or you could say um, 130.00, same thing. Nearest $100 is going to be right here. Testing digit then is 2, that's not 5 or greater, so we're not going to round up. We get just 100, which is the same thing as 100.00. Okay, rounding this one to the nearest dollar, once again here, testing digit is 7, that is going to be rounded up, so I'm going to go 312, or you can do 312.00, and to the nearest dime, once again this is the tenths spot, that's going to be the 7, the testing digit is 4, so that's not going to be rounded up, so we're going to have 311.70. That's rounded to the nearest dime.